Okay, so let's continue here and hopefully end it off. And let's show the sincere brothers and sisters that Jacob is the crown creation of the Most High Yahweh. So this is a clip here from a TV show called The Supernatural, which I don't really watch it like that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this clip here where it shows Gabriel versus Lucifer. Because again, you know, they like to put their subliminal messages in TV shows and whatnot. Look at yourself. Boo-hoo. Daddy was mean to me, so I'm going to smash up all his toys. Watch your tone. Play the victim all you want. But you and me, we know the truth. Dad loved you best. More than Michael. More than me. Then he brought the new baby home, and you couldn't handle it. So all this is just a great big temper tantrum. See that? The baby. The baby represents Yashara. Jacob, rather say. Let's go ahead and read this. Isaiah 41 and 14. Do not be afraid, you worm Jacob. Little Yashara, do not fear. For I myself will help you, declares Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Yashara. And this is why the Most High God says this here. Let's see if we can find that in Isaiah. No, Zephaniah, sorry. Zephaniah 3 and 20. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says Yahweh. Again, Yashara's restoration. So, Isaiah 41 and 14 again. Do not be afraid, you worm Jacob. Okay? Little Yashara, do not fear, for I myself will help you. Declares Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Yashara. Verse 15. See, I will make you into a Threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth, you will thresh the mountains and crush them, and reduce the hills to shaft, which we're going to talk about in a second. Let's read this in Isaiah 11 and 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. So again, this little child represents Jacob. You understand? Again, do not be afraid, you worm Jacob, little Yasharal. You understand? This goes hand in hand with Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1. See, a king will reign, sorry, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. That is the little child. Look what it says. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert, and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. So again, this is why the Most High Yahweh says, if any of the peoples of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem, right, Mount Zion, which is the new heavens, well, then they get no rain. In other words, they remain carnal-minded, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. You understand? And, you know, they get no mercy. All right, because they want to continue to believe in man-made lies. So this is why we read this here in Micah chapter 5, verse 7. The remnant of Jacob, see that? That's that little child leading many people. Because these people have to come up to Jerusalem in order for them to get the rain, in order for them to get the understanding. You see that? So this is why it says that little child shall be leading the other nations. Okay, this is why it goes hand in hand, you know, with Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, where it says, Run and tell that young man, Jerusalem, will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals. That young man represents Yashara, the remnant of Jacob, rather say. So it says, the remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples. See? Again, goes hand in hand with Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. The remnant of Jacob, talking about that young man, will be in the midst of many peoples like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass. Okay, because why? The Most High Yahweh says in Zion, we drink rain from heavens, all right? Deuteronomy 11 and 11, read it for yourself. So it says, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone. You see that? So over here, we're not worshiping no Hamashiachs. We're not waiting for no Idol Shah to come, you know, pick us up with some spaceships and take us to New Jerusalem. No. 
Just like it says, it says in the book of Adam, the most high Yahweh acts as Adam. Can Satan give you another earth like this? Can he bring you somewhere else? No. Satan just makes false promises to you. That's all he does. All right? So again, you people are going to continue to sacrifice to demons to your own harm. Okay? Because the most high Yahweh, he is given the reign. He's given the door of heaven right now. There's a lot of people out there that are refusing it because they want to continue to believe in their lies. You know, lies that religion and government have taught them. So look what it says here. Which do not wait for anyone or depend on men. You see that? So we're not lying down with men over here. We're lying down in green pastures. You see that? We're seeking the face of the Most High Yahweh. Our face is not with another man. There's you people out there who depend on men. You people who go down to Egypt for help. Verse 8 says, The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations. In the midst of many peoples. White, black, Chinese, Arab. Hispanic native, in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes, and no one can rescue. You see that? Just as we read here in Psalms 50 and 22. Consider this, you who forget God. Well, it tells you how all the nations forget the Most High. Let's go ahead and show you this here. Psalms 9 and 17. The wicked go down to the realms of the dead, all the nations that forget the Most High. You see that? Just as we read, Psalms 50 and 22. Consider this, you who forget the Most High, or will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you. Who will tear you to pieces? Again, like it says here. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest. Like a young lion among flocks of sheep. Why? Because Yahweh is with us. That's why it says like a like a lion among the beasts of the forest, which we're going to talk about in a second. Well, let's continue here. Like like it says here about Jacob, okay? Like a lion, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes, and no one can rescue. You see that? So all you nations out there, all you peoples out there who for, who forsook and forgot the Most High Yahweh, these are your days. You understand that? These are your days. No one can rescue you. This is the reason why you're going to be like dung on the floor with no one to gather you. You are going to bear your shame until you say, woe is me. All right. After that, it's peace, blessings, and love all day. But you must remain faithful to your Yahweh, your God. No backsliding. All right. No lifting up your legs. All right. Being a hitchhiker trying to wait for Jesus to pick you up again. Nope. None of that. This time you're going to be faithful to your Yahweh, your God forever. Okay. And then you shall obtain peace and longevity on the earth okay but if not well again the sword shall devour you let's read this in Isaiah 31 and 4 and it says this is what Yahweh says to me as a lion growls a great lion over its prey and though a whole band of shepherds is called together against it it is not frightened by their shouts or disturbed by their clamor so Yahweh Almighty will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and on its heights. Like we read here, Amos 3 and 4. Does a lion roar in a thicket when it has no prey? Does it growl in its den when it has caught nothing? Okay, Hosea 5 and 12. I am like a moth to Ephraim, like rock to the people of Yahweh. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Yahweh his source, then Ephraim turned to Assyria and sent to the great king for help. But he is not able to cure you, not able to heal your source. You see that? So again, right? This is what happens to all of those that forget the Most High Yahweh. They get teared to pieces with no one to rescue them. Okay? So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says this here. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many people like a lion among the beasts of the forest. Because this lion among the beasts of the forest represents the Most High Yahweh, as we read here. Okay? As a lion, a great lion growls over, sorry, as a lion growls, a great lion over its prey, and though a whole band of shepherds is called against, sorry, a whole band of shepherds is called together against it, it is not frightened by their shouts. So this is talking about the Most High Yahweh being with us. You see what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and uh, read this now. In Isaiah 58 and 1. For the moth will eat them up like a garment. 
just as we read, right? Hosea 5 and 12. I am like a moth to Ephraim, like rot to the people of Yahweh. So, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm, who's the worm? Well, we already, you know, we already went over that. Okay, Isaiah 41 and 14. Do not be afraid, you worm, Jacob. Jacob is the worm. All right? So again, the moth will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generations. Again, they shall be only salvation on Mount Zion. This is why the most high house says that we shall live the days of Adam. Once again, my salvation through all generations. Okay? Everyone shall know the Most High Yahweh's name. The Most High Yahweh says, His name shall be great. Amos 9 and 13. The days are coming, declares Yahweh, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. Verse 14. And I will bring my people, Yashra, back from exile. Okay, in other words, back home. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. As it is happening now spiritually. You see that? The Most High Yahweh says he's given us our spiritual inheritance. Remember, remember, everything takes time. Okay? You have to have patience. You cannot become faint-hearted. You understand? The Most High Yahweh says he gives us everything in due season. So it says here, they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruits. Verse 15. I will plant Yashara in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I had given them, says Yahweh, your God. Again, the Most High Yahweh says that this shall be an everlasting kingdom which he is building. Never shall it be uprooted or destroyed again. Okay? From ages everlasting, like the Most High God says. All right? So let's read this in Isaiah 14 and 1. Yahweh will have compassion on Jacob. And once again, he will choose Yashara and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners, you see that? So this is why we must not hate on the foreigner who is trustworthy. All right? The foreigner who wished to obey Yahweh's law, who wished to learn about his ways and trust in his words, they are just like us. You understand that? They are part of us, rather say. You understand that? So you're supposed to love them just like just like you love your brother and your sister. All right? So again, foreigners will join them and unite with the descendants of Jacob. Verse 2. Nations will take them and bring them to their own place. And Yahshua will take possession of the nations and make them male and female servants in Yahweh's land. You see that? Again, and make them male and female servants in Yahweh's land. No more shall you be a male and female shrine prostitute, but you shall be a male and female servant of Yahweh. Okay? It says they will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors, which just goes hand in hand with Isaiah chapter 31, verse 8 and 9. The Most High Yahweh says about the Assyrian that their young men shall be put to forced labor. Verse 3, it says, On the day Yahweh gives you relief from your suffering and turmoil you and from the harsh labor forced on you you will take up this taunt against the king of babylon you see against the rock of fella the rough child all of those you know host of satan all those people who are defiled with the bread of wickedness all right this is what we would say against these ungodly nations of people who are not a people look what it says you will take up a taunt you see that? Pure mockery in these days. Everlasting scorn. Everything that their hands have made, damn it. You will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has come to an end. How his fury has ended. Verse 5. Yahweh has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. Which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows. And in fury, subdue nations with relentless aggression. You see that? Soon, very soon, this verse right here shall come to pass. Verse 7. All the lands are at, sorry, are at rest and at peace. They break into singing. Alright, so this is why the Most High Yahweh says, A little longer, 
and the wicked are no more. You understand? So you have to have patience and faith. Because all of this is going to be done through the zeal of the Most High. Isaiah 60 and 10. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you, in favor, in favor I will show you compassion. Verse 11. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut, day or night, so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. So this is why the Most High Yahweh says that anybody and all peoples can worship the Most High Yahweh if they are willing and obedient. You understand? This is the reason why we have written the laws of the Most High Yahweh on our houses and on the gate. They must worship Yahweh, Yahweh alone, and understand His requirements. Like it tells you in Micah 6 and 8, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. So, again, let's go ahead and continue this with verse 12. It says, For the nation or kingdom, this is why, once again, I said they have to be willing and obedient. Because we can't force this upon nobody. You understand that? We can just show them. All right? But if they don't want to, well, you know, they have to deal with Yahweh's judgment. Because they're not better than Yahweh. Nobody's better than the living God. This is why all this is happening now. Because he's showing you to your faces that nobody, none of you, are better than him. So again, for the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. Why the you know why you think sorry why do you think you know the most high how it tells uh tells us to don't forget about gog you know to blot out gog and don't you forget it so it says for the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish it will be utterly ruined okay so it's on you you understand that serve the most high yahweh or go through your everlasting judgment and with that, peace, blessings, and love to the righteous servants of Yahweh, whether they're white, black, Chinese, Hispanic, Arab. Peace, blessings, and love to them, to all who love Yahweh. Shalom.